Three hunters are chasing plains game in Namibia, and they're using the latest generation of hunting technology. You know, right away, I could tell this was a whole different game. And it, frankly, it's a game changer. While in Texas, quail hunters are funding research to keep their beloved sport alive for generations to come. Good shot. It's a globe-trotting adventure with new tools and old friends <laughs> in this sporting classic. Some adventures are found at the crossroads of epic and unforgettable, and they're best enjoyed with a close friend, a companion who cherishes the sporting life just as much as you do. It's someone who knows the magic contained in the simple phrase, opening day, and who understands that the words hunter and conservationist are one and the same, for we've been giving back for generations and sharing the outdoors with someone who celebrates the history, the art, and the romance of this way of life makes for a friendship to last the ages. One where the sound of a snickering horse, the crackling of a mountain campfire, or the whiff of gunpowder will transport you to that same stirring part of the soul. Welcome to Sporting Classics, that old trusted friend who shares your love of adventure and reminds you of the greatest Stop. days of your life. Okay, we just get some zebra. Uh, game's buck, and I see some eland as well coming down. So we're gonna go down this valley and hopefully there's a good trophy in that group. Before coming to Africa, I had not hunted much really big game, mostly just smaller stuff. I came into this situation very nervous of, what did I get myself into? It was definitely cool this morning. Of course, yeah. Crazy thing to me about Africa versus the US is you never know what you're gonna see. You know, when Sporting Classics called and said, hey, would you like to come to Africa with us? And I thought, wow, what an incredible opportunity for a lifelong hunter who grew up hunting deer, the chance to be in Africa among all this game. You just couldn't turn that down. I think this is pretty awesome, you know? Being able to be out here and see the abundance of game and the lack of people, I always love that. The diversity and the opportunity of game that you have here is just fantastic. So it really keeps you on your toes, and it's very exciting. I'm in Namibia with three good friends who are hunting Plains Game with Umjeve Safaris. Brandon Maddox is the founder and CEO of Silencer Central. Richard Turner is president of Umarex USA. And Dan Flavin, well, he's the glue that helped bring us all together. I wanted my friends to enjoy an unforgettable safari experience, and I knew this was the right outfitter for the trip. You know, this is the outfitter of the year at Dallas Safari Club several years ago, and, and you can see why. I mean, beautiful views of the landscape, and uh, you're hunting right outside the, the door. I mean, it's no long drive. It's just as you leave the gate, basically, you are in hunting territory and lots of critters around. One of our main objectives of coming over here to hunt in Africa was to be able to use the Umarex air guns. I've used the hammer in, in South Carolina pretty extensively on hogs and on deer. In fact, the first deer that I shot, it literally rolled that buck. I mean, it was just a, it was a devastating blow. The hammer, this thing really lived up to its billing, didn't it? You know, right away, I could tell this was a whole different game. And it, it, frankly, it's a game changer. So it was such an exciting opportunity to come over here because air gunning for big game is a challenge. So as we were driving, all of a sudden, on the next hill, we see a bunch of wildebeest. OK, Richard, there's some blue wildebeest down there, up there on the ridge. So we're going to go down the valley and see if we can have a good stock up on them to them. So as you make that stalk, and ours was, was uphill, it was seriously uphill, and, and we get right to the top. As we move our way around the brush, all of a sudden, Richard's shirt got hooked by a phone brush. Shirt. 
the wallabies hears the snap and moves ran off. And everything goes crazy. Everything goes crazy. They don't know what we are, but they know that is not a normal sound. Okay, come Richard. It's just here. It's just here. Then we go into hyper mode. I know this is our only opportunity we have, so we have to move as quick as possible. Right here, right here. We finally get right through the bush real quick. Everyone's set up, and there's one big blue wildebeest that presents a shot opportunity. That's landing broadside. Everybody's hearts is pumping, mine, Richard's, but it's so important to stay calm. Yeah, take it, take it. Good. But in the end, Richard put a brilliant shot on the wildebeest. It didn't even go 20 yards, and down it went. Oh, awesome, Richard. Well done. <laughs> you know, a blue wildebeest is a big animal, and it's just a testament to the power of the hammer. It just absolutely knocked it down. And that just shows you the power of that air gun. Again, shot placement is the most important thing, but the power and the knockdown ability of that big round really proves itself. Beautiful. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much. That was so, I'll never forget that experience. Great. One animal down, now it's Brandon Maddox's turn to put the Silencer Central suppressor to the test. A suppressor can reduce the sound of a gunshot by up to 35 decibels, but hunting with a suppressed rifle offers more benefits than just noise reduction. Really what I found too is, once someone uses a suppressor and they see it cuts back recoil, um, you're gonna have the same kind of recoil reduction that you'd have with a, a muzzle brake, which is nice. So it's definitely a game changer from enhancing the hunt. You know, hunters are using them all over the country and, and the market is, is really just beginning to open up in, in the suppressor deal thanks to his business model. And I tell you, once you hunt with a suppressor, you really don't want to go hunting any other way. The rolling plains of Namibia hold a wide variety of game and Brandon was on the lookout for a mature sable bull. Literally, you know, it gets dark here about 6.30. I would say at like 6.20, uh, we found one in the dusk. It's pretty big, right? Yes. It was, you know, pretty far off the road, so we had to stock and get to it. But once we got there... Mistakes. Okay, there you go. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good shot. You know, put a kill shot on it, first shot, it dropped. Well done. <laughs> Did he go down? He went down. No way. You know, it's just a perfect scenario, and it's a beautiful bull. You will never shoot a better one. That, that yeah. is just <laughs> Really? Oh, is that big? Yeah. yeah. You know, the feedback was that this bull is so old, he had kind of served his purpose. So oh, to be able to harvest him is a super exciting. That's a stunner right there. That's a showstopper. Sporting Classics is brought to you by Winchester, the American legend. Winchester repeating arms. Walther, it's your duty to be ready. Silencer Central, silence delivered. Boomerex Air Guns, the year of the air gun hunter. Right on, see the difference. And by Sea Run Cases, handmade and travel tough. There's quail and then there are hills. Look at that. Yeah. This is just a prescription for great cover, isn't it? Yes. That's gorgeous. You know, I, I think it was uh, Aldo Leopold who described quail hunting as the grand opera of sport. What do we got here? And by that he meant a number of things. Number one, not everybody gets to do it. Chris? Right. Nice shot. Number two, not everybody can appreciate it. Oh, they're both on it. You got double point. Wow. Here we go. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And number three, it, it's a pageant. It's a pageant of moving parts. Oh. Good shot. Birds have an overdrive. No release bird could ever do. Good girl, come here. You've got your <laughs> friends that you're talking with. You've got the dogs out front that are hunting that you're looking at. You've got the country that you're in and, and that you're observing. And, and it, it really is a pageant. Good shot. 
<laughs> Come on, let's see. Dad. Good girl. Good girl. Come here. Good girl. That's a good girl. Come here. Come here. My good friend yeah. Steve Lamboy and I are in Central Texas at the stunning Snipes Ranch. We are hunting with Joe Crafton, president and founder of the Park Cities Quail Coalition, a nonprofit created to help restore and sustain wild quail populations. Okay. I moved to Texas 21 years ago from Memphis, and in Memphis we had a tradition of quail hunting that disappeared with a lot of the farming practices and lost our quail. And so when I moved to Texas, I had very few expectations of wild quail hunting, and then I discovered this incredible resource that we had, and I wanted to get involved with more quail hunters. So I started a nonprofit called Park City's Quail, which is the little community in, near downtown Dallas. And this group of sportsmen uh, raises significant amounts of funds to help our cause and the cause of Bob White conservation by putting their business principles to use to help fundraise and, and increase awareness about Bob White conservation for the Rolling Plains Quad Research Foundation. Here at the Rolling Plains Quail Research Ranch, we say that everything points to quail. Quail are at the apex of every decision that we make. And we want to know, when we tug on this string, whether it be the coyote string or the small mammal string, what happens to the other strings because they're all connected. These connecting strings also run through the Texas quail hunting community. And at the center of the web of passionate hunters, you'll find Rick Snipes. His ranch has been called the Augusta National of Quail Hunting and his impact on the sport of quail hunting is legendary. Release the hounds. Here we are at the famous Snipes Ranch. This is ground zero really for the best quail hunting in this part of Texas for sure. Between great cover, nice conditions, and good dogs. Fingers crossed. There's not one thing done on this ranch that the Bob White quail is at foremost in our thinking. Look how, look how pretty that is. That's gorgeous. And that's what makes this place special, is nothing is done here or has been done here in, in which the quail is at the primary beneficiary. First, nice, Chris. Good, Chris. Yeah, thank nicely you, thank done. You. Good girl. All right, recovered too. Good shot, Chris. They are scooters, these birds. What's the expression? The difference between pen raised quail and wild quail is the difference between lightning and the lightning bug. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's true. But in 2010, on this ranch, we had birds everywhere in July. And in November, you couldn't hear a bird whistle on this ranch. They were gone. Gone. So as a board, met and decided that we would take a look at and fund studies looking at all the possible causes that could have created that decline. And out of all that broad general survey, the only issue that rose to the top and screamed, look at me, look at me, was the issue of parasites. The Park City's Quail Coalition is a volunteer organization of passionate and generous quail hunters who have donated more than $15 million to help fund the mission. A primary beneficiary of this funding is the Rolling Plains Quail Research Foundation, which has created a living laboratory to devise management strategies and methodology, including an ambitious undertaking to understand the parasites and eye worms that have decimated wild quail populations. And all that research has been funded by private money. And I think the channeling of private dollars uh, to wildlife conservation is, is a big tradition in the United States. And Park City's quail and the Research Foundation here are certainly living, breathing manifestation of that spirit. The Park City's Quail Coalition is just one example of hunters working together to help preserve the sport they love. Safari Club International is another. SCI is on the front lines of hunting conservation, rights, and access in the United States. Through their efforts, more hunters can enjoy the freedom to hunt here at home. Chris, once you push to the right of that bush, I'll go in between the two bushes. They should be, they should be fast. Fast! 
Good shot. Good shot. God. Uh, that was good looking. Well, you know, the bobwhite quail is considered to be the king of American game birds, I think, probably. Many people would agree on that. Keep coming, Steve. Fast. Good shot. Now, I was tempted to poach Chris's bird, the first one. But for the sake of the team, I, I let it go. The host has to have his day. While Steve is gracious enough to let me have my day, he certainly isn't shy when it comes to discussing his passion project, the latest Negrini cases designed for wing shooters. Well, what's new with Negrini cases is the new Negrini wing series. Negrini, of course, has been making cases for over 45 years, specialized in long gun cases. We have pistol cases, of course, as well. However, our two new series here are for waterfowlers and for upland hunters. These cases are for travel or for daily use. You can pitch them in the back of the truck. It doesn't matter. You're not going to injure these cases. Once more into the breach. Oh, they're both on it. Yeah, double point. Wow. That's beautiful. Burn up. Good job. OK, I'll bring Lucy over there. We'll find that bird. The American Conservation Model is the world's most successful system of policies, laws, and funding which manage and preserve wildlife. It was created by hunters and continues to be funded by hunters who have always been at the tip of the spear of wildlife conservation. Well, you know, you look at Nash Buckingham and he killed a jillion ducks when he was young and he's, he was right there with Ding Darling and the formation of Ducks Unlimited and the founding of the Duck Stamp. And, those sorts of things. And sometimes I think that only those of us who this loved them enough when we were young that we wanted to kill them all end up being Arctic conservationists. The same love grows and matures as we do. And, and in the United States, we've been particularly fortunate in that we're a free country. We just couldn't and sportsmen have a voice. And they've channeled that voice through various organizations. And I think that's the only way it ever will work, is, is private guys. Park Cities is a great example. Uh, I think since their founding in 2007, they've raised some 12, 14, 15 million dollars, all for the conservation of, of uh, Bob Whites. For more epic wing shooting action, check out Call Time, my latest book and DVD set celebrating the world of bird hunting. It's the perfect gift for an avid wing shooter or for yourself. Order your autograph copy today. Sporting Classics is brought to you by Winchester, the American legend. Winchester repeating arms. Walter, it's your duty to be ready. Silencer Central, silence delivered. Boomerex Air Guns, the year of the air gun hunter. Negrini Cases, ultralight, ultra strong, the pinnacle of Italian design and technology. And by Safari Club International. Join the fight to protect hunting across the country and around the world. In Namibia, Richard Turner has just taken a beautiful wildebeest with his Umarex air rifle. And Brandon Maddox accomplished his goal of dropping a gorgeous sable with a suppressed rifle. Now it is Dan Flavin's turn to get behind the Winchester. He's got a bunch of them. One of the animals that I'm looking to take is a mountain zebra. Just beautiful markings on these. Oh, yeah. Zebras can be a lot of people underrate zebra hunting. My father-in-law said when I went to South Africa, he goes, definitely shoot a zebra. He goes, it's the most fun hunt, and everybody overlooks it. They think it's a horse. It's not a horse. It's not a pony. It's, it's a zebra. We, we will we'll see some of them, but that was, that's a hunt. I spotted some mountain zebra down in the valley, busy feeding, which is an excellent opportunity to get uh, close to them. The wind was blowing in the right direction. Everything was in our favor. So we worked into a good spot where we could kind of observe what was going on. They don't know about us over here for all the time in the world. It was quite a big herd, so it was quite a challenge to find an easy animal to shoot. I think we must go for the male. So then we find a nice stallion on the side. We moved our position from the first place we were standing to get in a better position to take a shot. 
and I got set up on the sticks and just got comfortable until we decided that the time was right. You think you want to show them? Just give him some time. He's going to come up now. Roger. Okay. He's standing. Get ready. When you're ready, take him. And then I would say we were about 120 yards from the zebra when, when Dan made a shot. Well done. We looked. Then he made a perfect hard shot. The zebra ran about 70 yards and went down and... Well done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> On the money. What a hit, man. They had no idea we were there. That 300 wind man just powered it. Oh, this is just the right tool for the job. He tumbled, too. Mm -hmm. He took, like, two steps. Tumbled, that's how he yeah. won it, man. Right. Down. Ten zebra yards. in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Saved you on. Yeah. Let's move on out. I must say, I was... Uh, I was delighted. It was our first Beautiful. animal. Huh? Beautiful. He's down and out. Oh, he's got the great colors too. Yeah, Here he's too, nice. man. Yeah. He's good looking. Well done. That is awesome. Zebra goulash. To be honest, I'm very, I'm overjoyed when we make that final shot too. Because to me as a PH, especially myself personally, the, the hunting part of the animal is what makes the hunt. One, two, three, bananas. As hunters, we can always challenge ourselves to be better. We improve our shooting skills through practice and repetition. We improve the tools that we use and the land that we hunt. Our sport can never be mastered as each hunt finds a new and unique way to test us in the field. Preserving these opportunities and this lifestyle for the future of hunting, well, that could be our biggest challenge yet.